Let's, let's, let's not play, boy. All right, all right. I want to get into some draft talk. This is about like the last time we're going to be able to talk about the draft before it happens. And every year, every year, there's always a person that has a ton of media hype. We talk about it a lot. People think it's going to go super high. And then he plummets and falls down the draft heavy. And I always think in retrospect, there's also a lot of like, we could have seen this one coming. There was some bad tape out there. It's all media guys talking about this person. And afterwards, you look at it all and you're like, hmm, there is no way anybody like any GM or coach could have thought all the things that we were thinking. You know what I mean? Look, look. Yeah. (laughs) And every year I feel like there is that one guy that does that for me. So the thing that I did real quick was Google Jordan Love mock draft Hmm. yes and i want to tell you i think there who is this year's jordan love is really my question so sports illustrated had jordan love going possibly five or six cbs sports rj white had him going six nfl's chad reuter had him going 10 Hmm. espn todd mcshay had him going six right look he went 26th. Yeah, and I'm looking at the teams they had taking him. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah. They, they they had, what, the Saints, the Chargers, the Dolphins, people who did take quarterbacks, but not that guy. I was sure last year before the draft that Tua was going to Miami. That was all but, but done, and I knew that as a regular person walking on the streets. <laughs> New Orleans had Drew Brees, mm-hmm. and they had two backups that they liked. They had Jameis Winston, and they had Taysom Hill. Yes. There's no way they're drafting a quarterback number 10. Bull. And then <laughs> <laughs> we, we, got, we got the Chargers, who we know were in love. And I, I do mean in love, like romantically in love with Justin Herbert. Mm-hmm. They were never going to draft George in love. Like, no. Look, and it was the right choice not to. Because everything we've heard about Jordan Love, obviously we've seen him not play at all, but all the like leaks and stories out of practice is this guy is not very good. This guy is rough. And I don't know because I have not seen him play. I'm just saying what we have all seen and heard people say, and it's not good at all. So you got to think about it. He's falling all the way down to 26 and Green Bay moves up to catch him. So you don't even know how far he would have actually fallen. Maybe out of the first round. A hundred percent. So I got to ask you, who is the guy in this year's draft? Look, especially if you have a quarterback take, I'd love it. That is going to be this year's Jordan Love. The one that everybody is like in retrospect. uh, Look, the tape did not say what all the talkie heads said it said. For the purposes of this, we are not the talking heads. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> because I have been really, really low on Mac Jones this entire time. I think Mac Jones is the number one candidate to fall. Some people have him going to San Francisco at four. Others have him going at like seven. I don't see that happening. Or, or three. But three, seven, top ten. And there's mm-hmm. five quarterbacks su- supposed to go. People are saying the Patriots will move up and get him. I, I don't see it. I don't see it. few reasons. I think, number one, something that no one is talking about in the media, but we've talked about here on the Fly Route podcast very much, is his character concerns. Did some more digging, got some more research done. He has two DUIs, one from high school, one from college. Is that okay. your franchise quarterback? Is, I mean, look, people have chosen worse guys. Oh, absolutely. Now, keeping it moving on the field. Yes, played at Alabama. There's a narrative of guys coming out of Alabama. Number one, Alabama does not produce quarterbacks. They produce skill position players on offense and defense and occasionally an offensive lineman. Number two, Alabama often overworks their players. They come into the NFL either burnt out or on the cusp of a major injury. Third, I got I got some stuff for Yo, you. Yo, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> loving this. Uh, third is look at who he played with, which is the argument we did on our draft preview about a month ago. He has guys like Devontae Smith, who was my second candidate to fall, actually. Ooh. I'm going to get to that in a second. Yeah, people say he's small. 
He's 6'1", 175. People say he's not even 6'1", and he's actually 1'6". He's about as thick as this Mike Pole. Like, his no, legs is... No, he recently got remeasured. And you know like how the KD thing came up, and everybody's like, yo, KD, you've been lying, bro. You like 7'2". <laughs> like, they said the reverse for him. He's actually like 6 feet 2 inches, 166, 160. Ooh. ooh. Yes. Yes. Tiny. Yes. Like he's been officially weighed and he is smaller than advertised. And though he was fantastic at Alabama getting throws from Mac Jones, I think that his size will be a huge concern for NFL teams. We've, we, we watch football. We love football. And the thing that football fans love are the hits, especially the wide receiver talking trash, go over the middle, and he going to get hit in the mouth. I don't know if this guy gets up if he gets hit in the, hit in the mouth. He He's... He's small. He he real I I've seen middle school children bigger than him. Stop. I, right hand to God. I would testify in open court right now. I have a middle school student in my class you personally have right one. now who is six foot and easily 170. I swear to God. Look, I believe you. <laughs> Okay. Look, I believe you. I believe Who you got, you. though? Who you got? Okay. Okay, if we're talking quarterbacks. Right now, the mm, here, 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 here's what I'm going to say. I honestly believe that it's more likely than not it's Zach Wilson. Mm. Zach Wilson is the person whose tape will not match at the end of it all. And they'll say the same things they said about Jordan Love, where they were like, Jordan Love was really good the year before his last year, but his final year, he had a poor O-line. He had a younger team, way less help. So the tape looked worse. But what we saw from before was super great. And he has a high ceiling that we can obviously achieve. And look, if he does not get taken at two, that's a plummet fall for me. And someone will... Maybe possibly come up and try to grab him and think that they've gotten a steal. And mm -mm -mm. that's fair. It won't come out the way it's supposed to. I just, I think he's a prime candidate to be a bust. But every, every, and I do mean like every mock draft since like January has had him going to the Jets. And But that's kind of the point. I read you all the mock drafts. You did. He's at six. He's at six. He's at five. He's at ten. I maybe the Jets are but why would the Jets put out this smoke screen? They don't have to. They know who number one's gonna be. It's gonna be Trevor Lawrence, and the Jets have their pick of quarterbacks after that. So why make up all the rumors about Zach Wilson? Why does Because if I'm why if, does San Francisco make up rumors about Mac Jones? Well, I know why there that that one makes a little bit more sense. There's more competition in front of them and behind them about who is the quarterback. But Well, the only one person's in front of them, because we all know Trevor Lawrence is one. If you think two is as Zach Wilson as you think it is, what is the purpose for San Francisco at three doing a smoke screen? Maybe they're trying to trick the Jets. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they tricked the Jets into taking Mac Jones. Oh man. They that can't happen. Like everybody I've seen bigger surprises. <laughs> look, everybody gets refired all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. I, I mean, if I'm the Jets, I'm taking Justin Fields. I'm not doing anything else. That is clearly the number two talent in the draft for me. But you don't say. Mm-hmm. But who knows? I think you. I think you certainly. If the Jets don't take Wilson, I don't know who will because I don't think anyone else is planning for Wilson to be there because they are assuming the Jets are going to take him. Look, I I get it, and j people want to think a hey, maybe Justin Fields is a possible drop. I couldn't put him here for this segment. Because his tape matches the hype. His tape actually disproves the doubters. But that's where I'm at. It's, I'm interested to see what y'all think. Who do you think is going to be the player that has all the hype right now that is going to have a tumble in the draft? The fly route pod. The fly route pod. The fly route pod. The fly route pod. We want to thank you all for taking the time out of your day to listen to this video. Did you know that this video is part of a larger fly route podcast? 
Look us up wherever you watch podcasts. We are on Spotify, Apple Music, everywhere. Take the time, subscribe. We appreciate you. While we have you here, don't forget to like this video and hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit the notification bell. Otherwise, you will miss some of our YouTube videos. That's just the way YouTube works. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the Fly Route Pod.